Hi everyone, I wanted to give you an extra example of composite structures for bending. And so we have a box beam here that has aluminum top and bottom and brass on the left and right for the webs. If you're not sure what we mean by a box section, I've drawn an oblique for you there on the right that shows it's just a box cross section, hollow tube that heads off as a beam. And this beam is being asked to carry a two a kilonewton meter moment without having the stress in the aluminum exceed the allowable of 100 megapascals and the brass exceed the allowable of 160 megapascals and we're given the E of the aluminum and brass as 70 and 105 gigapascals respectively. So we want to jump in and we have to pick a material to convert and I'm going to suggest that we convert the brass to aluminum Oops. but that aluminum has to be equivalent stiffness so we're going to convert the brass to aluminum of equivalent stiffness to the original aluminum Okay, or to the original brass. We want it to still behave as if it's made of brass and aluminum. We just need it to be one material for us to do a little bit of work here on there. And to remind you and help us out, that moment that we're talking about, we are bending about the strong axis. So that would be the direction our moment's going. Whoops. And if it helps at all, we can get rid of that little line there that's not really helping what the box beam looks like. Okay, so if we're going to convert from brass we do need to figure out what is our conversion value and we said that when we find n our ratio we start with the material we want to convert so that's brass so we're going to set E of brass equal to our n ratio times E of the aluminum which of course would lead us to that N would just be equal to E of the brass over E of the aluminum. And since in this case the brass is actually stiffer, we're going to have 105 over 70, which is going to be equal to 1.5. So if you think about it, that is saying that our brass, if it's going to be replaced with aluminum, we're going to need to make that aluminum a little bit wider to have the same stiffness as the brass. So let's go ahead and draw our new section. So we'll start with our top flange. Try to get it about the same size as the original, the 40 millimeters by 10 millimeters. Might be pretty close. And now, as we go to draw, the web, instead of just being the 10 millimeters wide, we got to go a little bit wider. It might be a little exaggerated, but we're going to make that a little bit wider and try to get them the same length on both sides and the same width. And then we can come in and draw our bottom flange of aluminum. Didn't quite get that perfect, but thank heavens erasing is a possibility, so we can clean that up just a little bit. Maybe, maybe not. Right, so here would be our section. We need to go ahead and throw some dimensions on there. This new width here is now n times our 10 millimeters. So that's going to be equal to 15 millimeters. And that's the same on both sides. We still have 40 millimeters for the bottom and when we look at our side view we haven't changed anything about the height of this system so we will have our 10 millimeters our 40 millimeters and our 10 millimeters and we can definitely still say that this is aluminum, 
our bottom flange is aluminum, but our right and left webs are now aluminum transformed. So they're not really, they were brass, they've been transformed to aluminum. So now that we have our new shape, we can jump in and we can find our eye. And we can actually find that using, instead of the entire, well, we're still using the parallel axis theorem, but instead of adding up all four shapes, we actually have an outside box. So we can subtract an inside box, and it turns out that AD squared equals zero because D equals zero for both shapes. So that does make things a whole lot easier. So what we would find is that our I would just be the I of the outer box shape, so 40 millimeters times 60 millimeters, quantity cubed, all over 12, minus the inside block, which is going to be our 10 millimeters times 40 millimeters cubed over 12. And if we convert that straight to meters, just to make our lives a little bit easier when we find stress, we're going to find that that is 0 0.667 times 10 to the minus 6 meters to the fourth. And now that we have our eye, we can jump right in and find our stresses. So sigma max in the true aluminum, or real aluminum, if you will, occurs at C top and C bottom. It is the outermost fiber of bending where that occurs, and of course that's going to be equal to 0 0.03 meters. So we can simply come in and say that it's going to be our MC over I, so sigma max for the aluminum equals MC over I, which is now our 2 kilonewton meters times 0 0.03 meters divided by are 0 0.667 times 10 to the minus 6 meters to the fourth. And that one meter there got so screwy. Maybe I can clean that up a little bit. There we go. And that's going to work out to be a stress of 90 megapascals. We want that to be less than the allowable, and aluminum, we said, was 100 megapascals. So we're OK. It checks. It makes us happy. So now we want to find sigma max in the real or true brass. And that occurs at the top of the brass fland or webs. So this is at the top or bottom of our brass webs. which is at y equal to 0.02 meters. We're going to be using the my over i equation for this one. But remember, if we really want to get our sigma max in the brass, we're going to get that by taking n times the tr stress of the transform section, so our m max in our aluminum transformed. All right, so that's how we're going to get it back out. And so we would have our n times the absolute value of our negative my over i. Oops. And we could solve that as equal to our 1.5 times the absolute value of negative 2 kilonewton meters times 0.02 meters divided by our 0 0.667 times 10 to the minus 6 meters to the fourth. And ironically, that also turns out to be negative, or 90 megapascals. And 90 megapascals is less than our 160 megapascals allowable. So we're still OK, which is good. So to end, what I want to do is I would like to challenge you to go ahead 
and you solve with the aluminum being transformed to brass. You should get the same answers for the allowable stresses and I challenge you to do so. The one trick to remember is that, or not trick, but the thing to note, we start with our brass webs they're not going to change, it's the aluminum flanges on the top and bottom and since the brass is stiffer and we want the same behavior as the combined system if we want to just show the aluminum made out of brass but we want it to have the same stiffness as the original aluminum we need less brass to do it. So we might have flanges that are a little bit shorter. I made that a little taller there. So you might have a cross section that looks something like that as a little hint to get you started. So I hope this example helps. Pause and rewind as you need and see if you can prove to make sure you really understand this that both of them give the same answer. Have fun.